My name is Yasser, I'm a senior lecturer in pharmacy practice and a specialist antimicrobial pharmacist in secondary care. Today I want to go through a video which I think a lot of pharmacy students will find helpful and it's how I got a first class honours in my pharmacy degree. I want to make a short video where I go through some meaningful tips on how I achieved a first class honours and how you can too. Before I start, I want to give you three massive disclaimers. And the first one is the fact that I am not naturally smart. I don't know if the fact of being naturally smart even exists, but I know if it does, I'm not one of them. I spend a lot more time than a lot of other students trying to understand particular topics and trying to stick that into my brain. And that's something that I want you to hold on to when you're watching this video. I don't want you to feel like I've always been achieving far more. I don't want you to feel like I'm always outperforming the students around me and it's something that's just in my DNA. Absolutely not. In fact, one of the stories that I often say to provide some form of inspiration to the students that I teach is the fact that I didn't get into pharmacy school first time. I actually had to retake a lot of my assessments in order to get into pharmacy school. I was grateful for the fact that I did do really well when I retook all of the assessments and I was able to achieve three A's. But prior to that, I actually achieved three C's and no pharmacy school in the UK would actually accept me. So that's one of the disclaimers is the fact that I am not naturally smart. I am probably like a lot of you and struggle with studying. The second point that I want to go through is the fact that I'm not very efficient with my studying. So it's not one of those things where I could go to the library and say I'm gonna spend four hours on studying and I spend all of those four hours studying and then I have a well-deserved break. It's more of the fact that I will spend about 10 hours in the library and I'd realistically spend about three and a half of those hours actually studying. So efficiency is something that I have always struggled with as a student. The third and final disclaimer is the fact that I actually was working on a 2-1, perfectly in the middle of a 2-1 in my first three years of study. For those of you who do know, the course to study pharmacy in the UK is four years at an undergraduate level. The first three years of those, I was actually working on a 2-1. So something that I did in the fourth year made me pull up my entire grade to a first class honours. And I feel like I've got some meaningful tips on how I did that. So if you are already great at studying, if you are already efficient at studying, if you're already working on a first, Maybe this won't be massively helpful to you, but I still feel like I've got some tips for you. But this is for the people that struggle with studying. This is for the students that want to do well, but despite all of their efforts, you just can't get that first class. So hopefully you find this video useful. What I really want to be focusing on in this video is exam techniques. And this is something that the majority of students that I teach so I actually work as a lecturer in pharmacy practice at the moment. The majority of the students that I teach do not study well. I didn't study well. And that's something that I figured out in my fourth year. So in the first three years of studying, there's one thing that I did that almost all students do, which is very inefficient. And that's making notes. That's rewriting your entire lecture notes with fancy colors, highlighting your lecture notes and spending the majority of your year note taking. This is an extremely bad and very inefficient way to study. I don't want to go through the evidence base behind why it's so bad, but I will tell you that definitively there are several studies that show you that note taking and highlighting are a low utility study method. I will link a video in the description box below where I go through the evidence base behind this. So the main thing I wanted to do is scrap note taking, scrap highlighting. They were not an efficient way to study. So how did I study instead? So it's doing the one thing that you almost never want to do when you're studying for an exam, and that's practice testing. Everyone thinks that they don't have a problem with testing themselves. They feel like, well, I do it at the end, I do all of my note-taking throughout the year, and then I'll practice with questions at the end. That's something that's a big waste of time. What you should be doing is going through a particular topic, 
So what I used to do is, if I had my lecture notes in front of me, I would work through the first three slides of those lecture slides. I will look up any words that I do not understand, I will make sure I understand all of the definitions, I will try to understand the content. Once you have grasped the content of the first three slides, then I would make flashcards. But these flashcards were not the same way that you're taking notes. These flashcards were essentially writing down questions that could be asked in the assessment. So that's something that's really important. If you have sample questions, look at the way sample questions are written and you have to develop your own questions with the first three slides that you go through, for example. So, if you have lecture notes on pneumonia, the first question you're going to ask yourself is what is the definition of pneumonia? The next slide says, what are the causative organisms of pneumonia? Which bacteria can cause pneumonia, for example? Your next slide will have the question, name three causative organisms of pneumonia. Let's say it differentiates between hospital acquired and community acquired pneumonia. Name three causative organisms of community acquired pneumonia. Name three causative organisms of hospital acquired pneumonia. So you can have two separate flashcards. Once you've gone through and developed questions for those first three slides, try and answer them. If you can't answer them, you have not fully absorbed the first page of your notes. One thing that often occurs is you will write notes on the first three slides. You will know that if someone tested you, you wouldn't be able to answer those questions, yet you still continue. Don't do that anymore. The next thing that you want to do is test yourself until you can answer those questions. So what is the definition of pneumonia? You're thinking of the definition, try to define it. If your definition is wrong, correct yourself until you get it right. And then move on. Move on until you can correctly answer those questions without any help from the lecture slides. And then you continue to do this for the entirety of the lecture slides and you have done the first thing. You have tested yourself against all of the lecture slides. And then you would assume that it's instilled in your brain and you're ready for the exam when it's three months away, six months away. And the truth is absolutely not. What will then happen is you will forget 90% of your newly acquired information within the first week. This is a phenomenon that is well known and is known as the forgetting curve. You're going to forget 90% of your newly acquired information and you have to embrace that. So what do you do next? The next week, you go back to those questions that you had and you try to answer them again. If you can't answer them, look into your lecture slides for help and then try to answer it without the assistance of your lecture slides. So keep going through it until you can answer it without the assistance of your lecture slides. And then you do that same thing after three further weeks. So after a month in total. So you've got your initial test, you've got your test at week one, and then you've got your test after one month. And if your exam is three months away, then retest yourself closer to that exam. That way you're less likely to forget that information and it's more likely to store itself in your long-term memory. I'm mindful that this is a short video, but that's one of the most meaningful ways to study for assessments. And that's something that I did throughout the fourth year. I was very keen on practice testing throughout the year. So what I was doing there is using a study technique called active recall. And then the second thing that you're doing is something called spaced repetition. And that's the way in which you're trying to combat the forgetting curve work against the forgetting curve. These are two of the most effective study methods that I use in the final year of my pharmacy degree. I got a first class classification across all of my modules to the point that it pulled up the entirety of the other years. The way in which this works is because my final year contributes to the large majority of your degree. So the final year contributed to 70% of your marks in the degree. So that way, the fact that I got 74% as an average in the final year meant I pulled up the entirety of my other years. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did find it useful and you want other study techniques, follow me on Instagram. If you want access to my free masterclass on how to study more effectively, 
I will leave my Skillshare link in the comment section below. Hopefully this gives you some tips and tricks on how to study better for exams. If you found this video useful, please like it, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.